The Orbis Comarum, or Circle of Hair Coiffure, was the most popular hairstyle of the late 1st century AD. Tall, fluffy front hair was balanced by a braided and looped ponytail or a large wreath bun at the back of the head. Many Roman women had tight natural curl, which made the front hair easy to arrange. All they needed to do was to cut their front hair into a mullet shape while leaving the back hair long. Women with naturally straight hair had to curl it, either with a hot calamistrum curling iron as attested in literary sources, or perhaps with rag curls using felt fabric as I suggest here. For stability, the hair could be backcombed and loosely stitched with needle and thread, crucial reinforcement in the days before hairspray. The back hair was more problematic. Extreme length and density was essential for the wreath bun, but not everyone naturally possesses such length and density. Although male poets and moralists disapproved, Roman women frequently resorted to wigs and hair pieces when their natural hair proved insufficient. Close examination of Orbis Comarum portraits indicates that most could have been arranged from the sitter's natural hair. The occasional false bun may be detected. In this tutorial, our model's short hair and fringe will be transformed to that of a fashionable Flavian lady by careful rag setting on felt, arrangement, and the addition of a false wreath bun. Although wet curling is not attested in literary sources, the facts of daily life in Rome made it a viable alternative to the weaker calamistrum curl. The Romans loved to bathe. Many even bathed daily. They would have been familiar with the effects of water evaporation for changing the shape of hair. Also, the Romans were creatures of daylight. The hair could be set at bedtime and dry by morning. Rag Curling Procedure Wet the front hair and wind it around strips of felt which have been cut to a size appropriate for the desired curl diameter. These strips were cut to approximately 2 inches by 9 inches or 5 centimeters by 23 centimeters. As you can see, the curl is secured by tying the ends of the felt across the base of the curl. Alternating the direction of the curls causes the hair to be fluffier once it is combed out. You will only curl the front portion of the head from ear to ear. Allow the hair to dry overnight. In the morning, the following period appropriate tools would be used to dress the hair. Hair bodkins for parting, combs for smoothing and teasing, needle and thread for stitching the hair in place, and leaf spring scissors to cut excess thread. After removing the rag curls from the front hair, divide the back hair into many small braids using the hair bodkin and the comb. With needle and thread, bind the end of each braid so it can't unravel. Twist the braid ends together and stitch the entire mass low on the nape so that the ends of the braids are concealed. Stitch thoroughly. A firm foundation is necessary for the false bun to stay in place. Creating a false wreath bun. Anachronism alert. Most of ancient wig making technique is lost to human memory. 
but from literary sources and artifact sample analysis, it is believed they variously used human and animal hair, leathers and hides, grasses, animal and plant resin glues, and beeswax as materials. The following section intentionally uses modern synthetic materials and tools and means only to invoke the spirit and contour of ancient hair pieces. Separate a strand of hair and tie a knot at the center of the strand. This will give you an anchor for subsequent work. Combine the ends of the hair below the knot. Divide this hair into three strands and braid the false hair all the way to its tips. Synthetic hair tangles easily, so be gentle with it. After braiding to the end of the strand, bind the end with needle and thread to keep it from unraveling. Repeat this process on as many strands of synthetic hair as you desire. You may wish to choose synthetic hair that matches the natural color of your own hair, or blend different colors to create an effect. Once all the braids are finished, set aside one of them. With the needle and thread, string the other braids together through their knotted ends, then bind them together securely. Once the knotted ends are bound together, smooth out the braids and decide how wide you want the finished wreath bun to be. At that mark, bind the braids tightly together with needle and thread. Once all is secure, cut the thread to release the needle, then carefully cut off the excess braid ends. Stitch the butt ends together to form a ring. We will finish the wreath bun by using the reserve braid to conceal the join. Stitch the knot end of the reserve braid to the underside of the join, then wrap it tightly around the join twice and stitch it in place. Wrap the remaining length of the reserve braid loosely around the wreath circle, then stitch the end of this braid under the join point. Be sure to stitch securely. Once all is secure, 
Clip off the excess thread and your hairpiece is complete. The key to a natural looking hairpiece is to match as well as possible the texture, density and color of the natural hair it will be worn with. Attaching the hairpiece. Using a blunt needle and thread, stitch the wreath bun to the back of the hair. Place it so that it aligns well with the natural braids, concealing their ends. Use thread that matches the color of the hair. Stitch until all is secure. Dressing the Orbis Kumarum. Volume comb the previously curled hair. Comb the hair thoroughly and break it up so you get maximum explosion of the curl. For extra height, back comb to strengthen the shape. There was no hairspray before the 20th century, so this hair will be fragile unless it is reinforced by internal stitching with needle and thread. Tie a slip knot in the end of a thread. Attach the thread to the hair by passing the needle through the loop of the slip knot. Using a twirling motion with a blunt needle, loosely stitch the hair internally so that the stitches do not show. This will stabilize and refine the shape. Use this technique to stabilize the entire form. The continuity of the thread gives the Orbis Kumarum internal strength. Check your work visually for balance. At the end, lightly and carefully back comb again if necessary. A light touch is essential.
The style is now complete.